Hello everyone, welcome to another Carrie Wright Silk Coffee Break. I thought today it would be really fun to talk about mobiles. I have started uh, this quest of putting my silk in the air. I have seen this in my mind for years. And I was making mobiles when I was a little girl out of color coloring with crayon on paper and using thread to stick it up on the ceiling. Now there were other mobiles I was making sort of to practice and try to come up with some kind of a technique. And you can see this online on my website at carrywrightsilk.com. You'll find it under the art on the little shop drop down. This will appear in art. And this is, if I get close to the camera, hopefully you can tell, this is hammered copper wire and fishing line and silk. And I chose the copper wire because I wanted just a little bit of a glint. I wanted to, to catch the light. Um, and I chose the fishing line because I really wanted the effect of things looking like sort of floating in midair. I love the ethereal nature of that. One of the challenges was figuring out how to get the silk to be suspended. And so I came up with this idea of finding a way to trap the wire inside the silk so that then if I wanted to, I could bend it into different shapes. What I'm using is this heat and bond and here's, here's another thing, I've told you before, I'm a very lazy artist. So the idea that I was going to make an armature and then stitch fabric onto it was quickly rejected. Like I was never gonna hang in there for that kind of a fiddly thing. And I wanted something that would finish the edge of the silk. It completely finished the edge for me. And it also is sticky enough that it bonds that wire onto the inside when I sandwich two layers of silk together. I haven't lost any of the sheen or the ethereal quality of the silk itself by sandwiching two pieces and using the heat and bond in between. The next thing I had to figure out was what type of wire to use because like I said, when I first started out and I was practicing with, with this wire, um, along with being a very lazy artist, I'm also uh, somewhat cheap. So when I'm experimenting, I don't wanna spend a lot of money on supply. We did have this galvanized wire in excess. You see this great big roll that we have but I find it very ugly. I am with the wire kind of sketching my way toward a form. So I purchased both silver and copper. These are 18 gauge wires and this little thing called a bench block. Now I bought this tiny little thing, they, they come much larger but I figured I'd always be working on smallish pieces. So I bought a tiny one and I kind of wish I would have bought a bigger one and maybe I still will. But this has little padded feet on it. It's a very heavy, heavy piece of metal and you need a ball peen hammer because both ends do different things on the wire and you put the bench block on your bench and you put the wire on top of it and you start, you know, doing your thing with the hammer. And that is what creates this really neat effect. Let me show you the little hanger I made for this because this I can get right up into the camera for you. It creates that nice flattened wire. And I think using wire like this in a sculptural way just really helps the piece capture more light it's much more interesting when it's bent into these interesting shapes. And it also gives the effect that I'm after of every single piece of the mobile has been considered. My hands have worked every inch of it. And for me, that is very important. If you don't notice it, I notice it. And I feel like every little piece, every little inch needs to be carefully considered and it 
it needs to have that very special quality of being completely handmade, completely handcrafted. I think this says 26 gauge. Sorry, the the sticker is wearing off. I've I've used a lot of it. It's wearing off, but it's a very fine wire. And it's what I used um, most with all of the tiny little details in the next mobile I'll show you. This is the, the lowest piece. And as I come closer, you'll get a much better feel for it, I think. And you can see there's a heavy blue wire here. This will turn independently of the center section. And I have made this mobile to feel like the sky and space and a thunderstorm. So you see the clouds coming around, the red in the center represents the sun. Here are the clouds moving by. And I've bent the wire into lots of different shapes, rickrack sorts of shapes. That very, very thin wire is hiding, sandwiched with the heat and bond between two layers of silk. I'm gonna say scrap piece of silk, but there is no such thing in my studio. Nothing is a scrap, everything is. It's salvageable for something. It was supposed to be a pillow, and some of the color had moved into an area of the stripe that I didn't want it to be, and it had bled, and it wasn't good enough to be a pillow. So I kept that material on hand, and I don't ever throw any silk away. And once I got to looking at it, I just loved that motif so much, that floral, fun sunshine motif so much that I just started cutting out shapes and putting wire inside, using my heat and bond, making a gigantic mess, and just started cutting out these strange pieces, not quite knowing exactly what I was going to do. And it was when I got into this little doodad, and started making these fun little things that I thought, okay, I wanna see those hanging down all the way at the bottom, which means I need a larger structure up at the top that this can all hang from. And it just started to, to come together from there and the vision took hold and you know, it all just, it became what it is. My dream is to one day hopefully get to start doing some large installations in office buildings and hospitals, um, just any any place that you can imagine that would have a very large open atrium sort of an area rather than having a large piece of fabric hang down. I would love to see just a, a huge subtle movement of a mobile and I'd like to work on that scale. I think that would be really, really fun, but hasn't happened yet, but one can dream. <laughs> And the next thing I'm going to show you before I sign off is you can see here there's this strange Edison light hanging down. I work off of my little boom stand here because it's already hanging. So eventually this will be an overhead light fixture that has not just a light property, but a movement property. I appreciate you all following along. I hope you've enjoyed seeing just a little bit of the detail around how I made these mobiles and, and how I'll be making the little Edison light mobile. We'll see how that turns out. Hopefully it won't be a big hot mess. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everyone. Really enjoyed spending time with you on these coffee breaks and bless you all for showing up and, and always watching along with what I'm doing here at Carrie Wright Silk. Always remember, folks, there's a reason to have hope. <laughs>